So I just got a box in today labeled Smooth On. Now, this is actually not Smooth On product that's in here, or is it? This is coming from JD Hagler. He is a hold designer shaper, DIY guy, kind of like myself, that is been cranking out some awesome stuff. And he sent me these holds to just review for him. Oh, man. These look sweet. Okay, so my first impression on these guys as I'm pulling them out here, these do kind of like, these do kind of look like um, some of Louis Anderson's work. From a shaper's perspective, it's still a little on the amateur side, which is, I hope that's okay that I say that, JD. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that you can do to make them just a little bit better. Take it to the next level. There's three different textures that you're gonna see in climbing holds. You're gonna see the realistic, which is often referred to as textured uh, within the shaping community. And that's where you have this, any type of texture that's added in addition to the foam. Then you have artistic, which is different shapes than just trying to look at the realistic rock. And then you have clean. And the clean texture is this right here. The only texture that you're climbing on or that you're uh, trying to achieve with the hold is the texture of the foam that's called clean. So these holds are a beautiful mixture of the realistic and the clean texture, which I really like. Um, I'm a big fan of that. Now, achieving this type of texture here is actually fairly easy to do, but to get it to do what you want is somewhat hard. Now, the master of creating these type of textures here, I would say, is going to be Louis Anderson. Louis Anderson has gotten this texture down to the point where he can just, it seems like he is a foam whisperer and can just crack this foam any way that he wants it to go, and it goes that way. I reached out to him and asked him about that, and he said that uh, what he ends up doing is he ends up doing a lot of different cracks, and how you achieve this texture, back pedal here, is you just take the foam and you crack it. So let me show you what that looks like. So here's a block of foam that I had just the other day and I've already cracked it. And you can see here that you get that type of texture with it. And you can kind of, how I do it is I will make uh, scars along the foam and then crack it. If you want to see me shape this live online. I am planning on doing a live video to show you how to shape something like this one week from the release date of this video. So watch the channel. Set that aside. Back to Louis Anderson. He will snap a lot of foam and then use just what comes out right. And he said he goes through a lot of foam to do that. Now, the clean shape here is really important, and I think that the, making a clean shape hold, although it may not look as cool on Instagram or in pictures, it is my favorite to climb on and to set with, and it is also, I would say, the most challenging hold to create because you need to have it perfect. It's got to be perfect. When I reached out to Jason Kale, I reached out to Jason Kale about a year ago and asked him about uh, shaping advice, what he would give to somebody that was new. And he mentioned that the what he would say to a brand new shaper is take time with the finished product. Put a lot of time into getting it and getting it right. And what he's talking about is these little ridges. If If I move the shape in the light, you can start to see these little ridges come up here. Now, those are really hard to see 
in the foam itself before you cast it. And then after you cast it, or after you pour your silicone and you do your first cast and you pull it out, you can see these a lot more. So what you need to do when you're working with your foam originally is you need to get a light, like I have over here, okay, a directional light, and just move the shape around like this. And so and you can see these ridges that are coming up right here. This is okay for a hobbyist shaper to leave these in, but as soon as you want to take it to that next level, these need to be out. Um, the shapers that are out there in the industry will laugh and scorn at you if these are in your finished product. If you're going to take the investment in silicone to do a clean shape, take the time, the extra time, maybe it'll take you an hour, maybe it'll take you three hours on a hold like this and just move it around and you can use your hands and just smooth that out or a sponge, a soft sponge sanding disc okay, and just smooth that out. I like to use my hands. So that's, that's what all that I have to say on the texture. Fantastic mixture of the two, but those definitely, those are the key points that will take it to the next level, making sure that you have this smooth, texture really smooth and clean and you get these lines out right here now let's talk about the function of the hold okay we're, we're making these holds for a purpose why are you climbing on an artificial wall to begin with let's answer that question are you climbing on an artificial wall so you can increase your fitness or your training, your health, is it social, or is it just because you're a masochist? Except for the very last one, all of the other reasons, you need to round these edges right here. So if you can see, this, this one is probably the most nasty. You can see how this edge right here is really sharp. When you put you know, for me, I'm 185 pounds. When I put 185 pounds hanging on this thing, this edge cuts really tight. And when I'm climbing, I want to achieve the goal that I set, which is to accomplish the problem. So if I have this hold up here, I'm not going to grab it right here because that's nicer. I'm going to grab it right here because I'm going to be more successful at accomplishing my goal. But because of this edge right here, I'm probably going to tear up my hands. So maybe I am a little bit more of a masochist than I realize I am. To avoid this, when you're in the shaping process, you can. I just use my fingers again. If you're using floral foam, that's fairly soft. You can do that and just kind of run your finger right around this edge. Just kind of knock that down on just a little bit. These sharp crisp edges look really good for pictures on Instagram or Facebook, but as far as the finished product and what we are really looking for when we are climbing, we want to be able to last a long time. We want to be able to fail because of our fitness, not because our hands are bleeding or ripped open. So let's just smooth these out a little bit more. You know, on on something that's big like this, make that like a quarter inch radius. On jugs, you're looking maybe at more like a three eighths inch radius. Now, if you've got a, a really small crimp like this guy right here, which is excellent shape. I love the, the, the concept behind this guy, how no matter how deep you pour this here, you're always gonna have that same edge. I'm starting to reshape a lot of my holds to have this backing on there to force that finger in the exact spot. Uh, but this is a really tiny edge. So with really tiny edges like this, you're on that first pad, you can get away with a little bit sharper of an edge. Now, the, the last thing that I wanna talk about is bolt placement. Bolt placement, is really, really important. Bolt placement is important because you don't want to be able to use that bolt in the hold the way that you it was not intended. Uh, and he's done, a, JD has done a really good job here with the size 
of hole and how deep that bolt head sits into the hole. The bolt head comes right up here flush, which is pretty nice. Um, if these were to ever be sold over in Europe, these would not work though because the bolt head in Europe is actually bigger in diameter. So you couldn't use a metric bolt in this guy because this is just too small. So I like to have mine actually a little bit bigger than this because I want to be able to use that metric bolt and put in there. Um, so those are looking good. Now the function of the, the bolt outside of climbing is really critical as well because we want to avoid spinners. Now he's got a set screw in almost every single one of these here, which is really nice. That's going to take that away. Uh, but we don't want to put set screws in there if we don't have to. Now the way that the hold is going to naturally want to turn is counterclockwise because that is loosening up the bolt. So whenever you have the mass of the hold or the where you're going to be using most of the hold on the left side of the bolt, it's going to naturally be a bad spinner. So this hold right here is actually going to be a really hard spinner because the bolt hole is so far to the right side of the hold. And then we have the set screw right here is actually really close to the bolt hole. So that that's not ideal. I mean, it'll stop it from spinning, but it's not ideal. What would have been better here is if he would have taken the logo here, which is a pretty sweet logo, good job, JD, and the bolt hole and switched them. Okay, so putting the bolt hole here and putting the logo here. Now, you're going to say like, okay, so now I'm, I'm putting the bolt hole up a little bit closer to the surface, so I'm, it's going to be easier to, to use as a thumb catch. you gotta, you got to give and take a little bit. I would rather have a little bit of functionality with the bolt hole that was maybe not intended than having a spinner. Now, how about we get some other opinions on these holds that are just climbers, not shapers? That feels a lot like an outdoor hold. Yeah. A lot like an outdoor hold. Something that just like broke off. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like right away I could tell they weren't from like a big manufacturer. Like, how, how come? I mean mainly because you can, like there's not much, it's not very even on the smoothness, right? Unless you okay. was intending that. But I mean I could tell that. And then at the break you can see how it kind of divots in right here. Mm -hmm. It's not just a perfect so it's not completely smoothed yeah. over where it should be completely smoothed over. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, comment down below, and I will see you next time right here on Climber Dad.